Hey, this is a match once again. What about to the videos that are paid requests this time for Phil? Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1973 film High Plains Drifter, which someone was nice enough to send me this Blu ray from back in the day, quite a few years ago now. And. This was always, I mean, when I first saw this, this became one of my favorite westerns. Because I'm not a big western guy, as in I didn't grow up with westerns like other people did. I grew up more with more shorts films, One Man Army, Commando, Rambo 2, those type of action films. There are some westerns I do enjoy, for example, right here. I do enjoy this trilogy of movies, Fistful of Dollar trilogy, which I believe these got a 4K recently. I do enjoy those. My personal favorite is Young Guns. I love Young Guns. My favorite Western. Tombstone. Tombstone's a great one. I could, a Pale Rider, eh, I wasn't into that as much as other people were. Unforgiven, I don't mind. Uh, but the, there's others I do enjoy more. This one I think I enjoyed because I enjoyed Clint Eastwood's style in the movie. And the effect of, I like that it was a western, but it was a really a ghost story. Now I know there's arguments of, was he a ghost, was he not a ghost? But I think even Eastwood himself would say, you know, more, he's more of the... It's ambiguous, it's up to you to decide, but more likely, yeah, he was a ghost. I like that aspect, I like that almost supernatural, eerie, and the musical score by D. Barton amplifies that from the beginning. This really creepy, eerie score, <clears throat> and this figure kind of pops out like a phantom, out from the distance. They just say his eyes playing his trick on you, and he just disappeared because he went over the horizon, whatever, or just got through. Or he's a phantom that appears in this eerie store as he travels into this town of Lago. And he's this mysterious stranger, he never tells anyone his name. And you kind of find out that this town, a while ago, was a mining prospect where they found gold but then you kind of find out that gold might have been on government land and the former marshal there said hey this is wrong we can't do this but these bad guys led by Jeffrey Lewis who I remember as the uncle and double impact with John Rowling and Dam he worked with Clint Eastwood quite a bit he was in every every which way but loose in any which way you can among other films Sadly, he's passed away. Him and two others whipped the shit out of the marshal and died. And a lot of the townspeople watched. In fact, you get the idea that a lot of townspeople got that to happen. Because they wanted to keep that gold. Because, well, the town will go under if we do that. So at this point, Jeffrey Lewis and his buddies are in jail. And they're ready to get out of jail. And they want a bit of revenge on the town. For screwing them over, whatever the case may be. So that's why when the stranger comes to the town and they see he's got a pretty good set of skills. Because he goes in for a drink and these guys are being assholes. He goes in to get a, a shave. And these three people get upon him. And like, pew, 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 shoots one right in the head underneath the gown for the barber. Pew, 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 fucks their up and like, oh wow, this guy's really good. We want to hire you. And Clint Eastwood being his squinty-eyed Eastwood best, just... I'm a lot faster than you'll ever... What was it the line he said? I'm a lot faster than you'll ever live to be. Which I'll only hate to do that. Let me see if I can try. A lot faster than you'll ever live to be. See, I can't do it as like Eastwood. And 
there's either he is the marshal's brother who's come back to dear revenge for his brother or again more likely people say it is the ghost of that marshal there's even a bit of dialogue later on where someone goes that a spirit is a spirit can't rest if they have an unmarked grave and the marshal's buried out there but his grave is unmarked and then at the very very end of the film he finally is getting some marker on the grave and that's when he heads on out but it's also is when his job is done now like I said I like the eerie sort of ghost story aspect to it I like the way that we find out most people in this town is a piece of shit so plenty of what he's doing uh, you can't really blame him for it there's a bit that seems a bit too far but I it uh, he does get a woman and to be blunt rapes her in the barn and it's kind of hard to justify that even if she is a it's kind of hard bitter pill to, to swallow that you lead character but I don't know I guess being dead made him grumpy I don't know I, I don't think I kind of wish that wasn't in it to be fair Just, I mean, compared to some other people that fucked him over, it seemed like she got a bit worse. I mean, she was being bitchy. She wouldn't leave him alone. Uh, maybe if he just did that, slapped her, that'd be one thing. But the assault in the barn, I thought, you know. Even by the end of it, she seemed like she... That's a, But that's kind of the other the flip side, is that then she starts to seem like she likes that. And she enjoys that. Even later on... Like she gets pissy, but then it's like she wants a real man, so when he starts doing then she starts liking it. So like you kinda of, this weird mixed signal thing being sent, lady. And maybe the, that was what the point of that was. But it's interesting to see what this character does, how these people are pretty much ready to do hey we'll do whatever you want and how he kinda picks apart this town where you know how good I am you have no one else to help you so since you give me carte blanche hey you're making fun of these Native Americans I'm gonna give them all your blankets I'm gonna give them all your candy hey you make fun of this little guy this little person I don't make him the mayor and the sheriff you guys, you know, the one girl you don't try to kill me, I don't want to get the hell out of the room. I don't put a big old fucking fat stick of dynamite and blow the shit out of the fucking hotel. You guys in the hotel, you don't leave because I'm going to live here by myself. And there's some fun lines like the Padres, like, we're all God's children. Really? This is your family? Yes. Well, then you wouldn't mind if they live at your house. <laughs> Or like what the the sh at, what, at first when he's saying no to the job, and it's like, well, you're the sheriff, you like them, you save them. <laughs> like East would do how to be his best self, and that's why I think him as a director worked well because he knew how to utilize him, himself for the most part the best way. Not every Eastwood film he directed I love. I'm not a fan of Firefox. I think that's a boring as hell movie. But on the flip side, I love Heartbreak Ridge and you know, some of the others. Like I'm a Clint Eastwood fan. Love the Dirty Harry films. And just one of those scenes where it has that old... You could tell that he was inspired a little bit by Sergio Leone when he did certain westerns. But at the same time... There's a enough quirky moments to it, and maybe that's the wrong word to use, but there's enough little offbeat, little nuggets of 
stuff that makes it feel not just a typical Western. The big thing I think of is he gets a bunch of paint and he tells the whole town to paint paint red, paint it red. I even take some paint and he changes the town from Lago to Hell. So by literally because these people from are spineless and where I'm showing you who you truly are, I'm able to embarrass you, take your shit, destroy your town. He even comes up with a plan of, yeah, you get your guns here. But then Eastwood fucking leaves, so then when the bad guys come in, they shoot a bunch of the people that fucked over the marshal in the first place and blows up a chunk of the town anyway. And some of the supporting cast I recognize, uh, the guy who deals with the, the boots is John Hillerman. He played Higgins, who works with Tom Selleck and Madden P.I., the original TV show. Uh, Mitchell Ryan, he's a guy who, I think, I forget his title, Mine, it's something to do with the Mines. Mitchell Ryan, he was the main bad guy, McAllister, and Lethal Weapon 1, him and Derry Busey. He's in this. Uh, Buddy Van Horn plays the Marshal, and Eastwood had him do that because I think Buddy Van Horn was, st was Clint Eastwood's stunt double. Because it's supposed to be someone that kind of looks like Eastwood, but not the kind of be in your head. They it didn't either. It's Eastwood's brother, or is Eastwood himself come back as his phantom now? Buddy Van Horn, he would go on to direct. He directed Any Which Way You Can, and he directed The Deadpool, which I love The Deadpool. It's one of my favorite Dirty Harry films. So, again, you do have some recognizable people there. I mentioned Jeffrey Lewis, of course. And like I said, the, the supernatural feel to it makes it feel unique compared to other westerns. The little bits like paint the town red give a bit of offbeat flavor so it doesn't feel like a typical boring western. Uh, this whole, is he or isn't he a ghost? I think more than likely he is. Eastwood directed it so he's comfortable in his own skin of how he plays his greater assets on screen. That he knows what he can and can't do for the most part. Even the bit with how, like at the end, when Jeffrey Lewis is like, Who are you? And he's looking at Eastwood, and you have this like fire in the background, and Eastwood's staying there, and you don't really see his face, but you kind of see his a bit of a silhouette, and just a nice striking image. Here and there. Same with like the white of the whole town painted red. They really makes it memorable and not forgettable. And it's one of those things where like when I first saw it, like those aspects really stuck out to me and really made it above the norm of some of these other westerns at the time and you really get the sense that it's the middle of nowhere and there's like nowhere else for these people to go that's why they're trusting this stranger or they begrudgingly let this stranger do whatever he wants to do and again the more that you find out how weasel how weasley of a town this is you kind of get with the stranger more and more as why he's picking on them and embarrassing them and this guilt-ridden town to show a bit of their onto their comeuppance for their greed and being selfish assholes back in the day. Even the way it ends where after things done he goes out of town and whatever's left of the town and there's the little guy finally putting this grave to be marked. Never got your name, stranger. Yes, you did. You have this look on the face of the, the little guy as the guy rides off. Now, whether the little guy understood what he meant or it's like... 
It just says up to the viewer. But as it goes off, like, again, the way it's directed, the camera pans. You the always can figure it out. It doesn't have to have some stupid narrator or anything oversell the idea. You rise off in the distance, disappears like a mirage, and the movie's over. Now, again, I'm not sure if he had to assault the one lady. I thought that was... I don't know, that might, I, even then, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure about that, what the buoy, I'm not sure what Eastwood was going for with that, I guess is what I'm asking. Uh, the little guy, I wish maybe there's a bit more as to why Eastwood kind of, Eastwood kind of takes a liking to this little guy, where... You know, he makes him the sheriff, makes him the mayor, maybe just because everyone else makes fun of him. But I would like if maybe in the flashbacks, maybe the little guy tried to help. Because he's under, like, this floorboards and he's watching this. But maybe if he, like, tried to help. And if, like, he tried to help but he got whipped in the face. Or he got whipped and knocked out. Was like, but they don't kill him because they mean you mean nothing to me. You're a little shrimp, like whatever derogatory names they would say to the guy. But maybe if he like tried to help the marshal, he got get tit or punched or whipped. It's like get the hell out of here. You're nobody. We're not gonna bother killing you. Get out of here. So then he remembers that for when he comes back, and that's why he takes a liking to little guy. Like if they did a little bit more with that character. Uh, development wise that would have been nice to see same with there's this other lady that he takes a bit of a liking to maybe there's some kind of flashback where either she liked again if you think it was his brother that he liked his brother or he liked him back to they treat him well or try to warn the marshal in a fight like if you see a little bit more because the only for some reason, they show kind of the same flashback twice. Eastwood dreams of the marshal being whipped to death, and then the little guy imagines the guy being whipped to death, but it's almost the same scene. It's the guy being whipped. I guess the second time you see that more of the town is watching, so you get more of an idea of the viewer that more of the town was in on this and complacent and even kind of orchestrated this to happen, and that's the purpose of it, but... Again, maybe a little bit more development on some of these characters. Like I said, a little bit more. Of course, I'm always down for maybe a bigger body count. Clean with shoot a few more motherfuckers. Maybe if the game was a bit bigger. Like maybe if the game was, I don't know, half a dozen people. And so it's Eastwood. Maybe play a bit of him being a phantom. So he's like, pop out of nowhere to shoot these people. He like, did you just teleport there, or is it just really that good? But I do like the bit where two of the guys, he uses a rope, so he like takes a guy, drags his ass out, whips him to death. The other guy, he takes it, he hangs him, and people don't know where the hell he's at. So maybe I would like a, a bit more of a body count at the end, like a bit, if the game was a bit bigger. But these are like little teeny, teeny tiny nitpicks. It's still a really solid western. Uh, always enjoyed this. This Blu-ray didn't seem like it had many features on it. Which is too bad. And I don't... Yeah, This is, like I said, this definitely be in my top 10 favorite westerns. Would it be in my top 5? That's tough because Young Guns is my favorite. I know Tombstone would be in there. Yeah, probably would be in my top five westerns. I did like Rio Bravo. Man with no name films. Yeah, it'd, it'd be in my top five. I don't know where, but yeah. Like I said, the whole ghost phantom thing really made this stick out in a good way. And I tell, but I know I keep repeating this, but the whole image of the town being painted red. Like stuff like that that sticks out and... I still remember since I first saw this. Like I said, makes it 
stand out from the, the pack of other westerns that was coming around that time. I think this was successful when it came out, so... Thus, Eastwood got to direct and do more movies. So... Yeah. I say, if you liked Eastwood, you liked westerns, you liked a little supernatural flavor to it, definitely recommend High Plains Drifter. So... With that said, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.